All right, hey, uh, welcome back to Mechanical Pros. We're here with Quentin, and today we're talking about how to set up a back net card for a Daikin water source heat pump. So uh, you need the, your back net card to communicate to BAS systems, and uh, it's an option for each Daikin water source heat pump. But getting it hooked up, set up, having the right tools is always kind of complicated. Maybe one of your most uh, uh, frequent phone calls you sure, get. Sure, absolutely. How to set up a back net card for a water yes. source heat pump. So, uh, Quentin, walk us through some of the uh, the tips and tricks that you know to, to make this thing connect and, and uh, be a part of the startup. Sure. So there's a couple of cables that you're going to need in order to change the configuration of the water source heat pump back net card. Yeah. And those cables generally are not readily available at like Best Buy or you know, computer stores, usually these are items that you have to get offline because the, the connection style is, is not typical. Okay. So we use a DB9 null modem female to female serial cable to connect to these water source heat pump boards. Okay. And that's your gray one right there? That's the gray one right here. Yep. 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 And so unless your computer is like a Windows 2000 or something like that, you're not going to have a serial connector on your PC. Therefore, we have to have an adapter to be able to connect to the serial cable as well. And so we just use a USB to serial adapter. Okay. Okay. And these are, these are items that can be found online for relatively uh, little cost. So go to Amazon, don't go to Best Buy, don't go to a... Right. You need to, you need to plan ahead, buy this cable. Exactly. Put in your bag and be ready before you go out there. Exactly. Because if that's, that's usually the most common call I get. Okay. You know, they call and they say, hey, I'm ready to address these water source heat pump, but we're trying to do it. Say, well, do you have a serial cable? And they're like, a serial cable, what are you talking about? And then yeah. they, we described it and they're like, okay, well, I haven't used that in 20 yeah. years. Um, so you do need to have that cable beforehand, do a little pre plan. Yeah. You were joking earlier, don't call me at Best Buy looking Don't for call this. me at Best Buy looking for the serial <laughs> cable. Don't call me at Walmart That's because right. they don't have them. <laughs> you know, you're just wasting your time. Yeah. So let's get into it. So the way that we're going to um, begin this process is first, you need to download a program that's free. It's called Putty. This is basically just a, a serial connection um, okay. program. It's where do you, free where do you online. Down, where do you download that? The internet. You just Google Putty? Just Google Putty. P-U-T-T-Y. Google Putty, and then you're, it's probably going to be the first one that comes up, mm -hmm. and it's going to have a, a download. Okay. And so you download that file. It's safe, or at least it always has been for me. I haven't, <laughs> I haven't destroyed any computers. Putty is a widely known... Um, serial connection program. All right. You know, so it is free, um, no cost associated with that. So once you have the PuTTY program downloaded and it's on your PC, um, I go ahead and I make a shortcut for it just so I can find it later. Okay. So we'll go ahead and fire up PuTTY. So we just double click on the PuTTY app. And so it's going to bring up uh, a configuration screen. Okay. And so you see where it says session up here? Yeah. That's where it's automatically going to default to. So we're going to start at the very beginning. So we know that we need a serial connection. So we're gonna go ahead and click serial. Immediately it's gonna pop up, what serial line are you using? So I'm not sure, I don't know offhand. Say this is a brand new serial cable. We have to find out first um, what type of, uh, or what port we're using on our COM ports, right? Mm -hmm. So we simply press the uh, Windows key and start typing device manager. We select device manager. And then we're going to come down here to ports, COM, and LPT. So I'm using COM5. You see where it says COM5 there? Got it. So that's the, that's the connection we're using. So we can go ahead and X out of that. So we need to change this 1 to a 5. Okay, so we're using COM5. Our speed for the Daikin BACnet water source heat pump board is going to be 19,200. Okay, that's a, that's a value that Daikin gives us. That's the, the speed that this board is communicating over. Okay, so we're set there. Then we come down here to serial. And so this configuration that we're in now, down here where we clicked serial, this is very important that you set this up correctly. We want to ensure that we're um, on COM5 because mm -hmm. that's the connection we're using. Our speed needs to be set to 19.2. Our data bits need to be set to 8. Our stop bits set to one, our parity set to none, and then on flow control, we want to set it to none as well. Okay? How would you ever know that? Um, that's actually in the IOM for the Daikin Backnet water okay. source heat pump board. 
And so it actually gives these specifications. So, you know, down the road, if you forget, you know, you can grab the IOM that comes with that backnet board. Mm -hmm. And like you mentioned earlier, that's an option, you know, so um, if, it, if it ships loose, then you're going to get that IOM. If it ships installed on the unit, you're probably not going to get that IOM. You can just refer back to this video yep. or you can look at the IOM. Okay. So there's one more thing that we want to check and we could have done it previously, but we're going to do it now. So we'll go back to our device manager and we want to make sure that our port is set up exactly the same. And so the port you're, you're referring to is basically you're transferring the information from the board to this, to this USB-C. Exactly. Right here. Exactly. So now in this device manager, USB, yeah. we're essentially configuring our port and our uh, serial adapter. Yeah. So all you're telling us, Putty, is how to transfer that data from exactly. that board to your... Laptop. Exactly. That way they're, they're both talking on the same speed, the same language. Everybody's all on the same page. And so we click Properties. Then we're going to come up here to port settings. And we're just going to make sure that all of these settings are the same as the last that we just set up in PuTTY. Okay, so we're making sure that everything's the same. So we've got 19.2, 8, none, 1, and none. Okay, so we've confirmed that. That's all good. So now, at this point, we're ready to, we're ready to connect to our water source heat okay. port. Let's do it. So all we have to do is click the open button. Immediately, it's going to pop up a big screen with a little cursor in the top right we're going to press the enter key. Immediately you are going to be presented with the information on that uh, BACnet water source heat pump board. Okay, so there's a few things that we can go over here. The instance number, this is usually provided by your controls contractor, or if you are the controls contractor, you have that number already. On the name, you can put whatever you want that's gonna help you recognize this device. So since we're doing it here, I put it as MRG training, and then our location, I put our address, and then description, you know, you might put, it's in the kitchen or it's right. above, you know, whatever, you know, put it wherever. Um, that's where you put in the description line. The units, we keep that as English. Now the meat and potatoes that we're looking at here is the MSTP setup. This is, this is what matters, meat right? And this here. is the meat and taters. Yeah. This okay. is the meat and three. So baud rate, this is the most common thing that's going to be changed. Well, you notice down here, we also have another baud rate. We don't want to change this baud rate down here. This is simply how we connect to the water source heat pump board through this serial connection. This is not our MSTP communication. This one right here is the one that we want to change. And so for instance, if I, Mr. Controls Contractor, wanted to change from 19.2 to 38.4, I'm gonna simply press the six button, okay? And so now it's gonna show me all of the baud rates that are available on this board. And so if I wanted to change it to 38.4, I simply begin typing 38400, and I press the enter key. Now you see that it has changed my baud rate. Boom. It's that simple, right? And so if that's all that you wanted to change, you'd be done. However, most of the time, you're going to have more than one water source heat pump, right? So with that being said, you have to set what's called a Maybe MAC address. Yeah. You might have 300. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of water source heat pumps. Yeah. I don't necessarily want to address 300 water source heat pumps, but, I don't. but somebody might. But anyways, um, so at this instance now, you want to change, uh, you might want to change your, your MAC address, okay? And that's this value that you see down here that's labeled address switch. These are physical switches on the BACnet water source heat pump board, okay? So if you look closely, this is the BACnet water source heat pump board, and it is affixed to the main Microtech 3 uh, water source heat pump board. So the way that we're going to set up these switches, if you're familiar with binary code, then this will make a lot of sense to you. If binary code's new to you, yeah, it right. may be just simpler just to grab the IOM. They're gonna have a list of how the switches should be set for each address. Okay. But a simple explanation is, as we go up in numbers, we're going to double the number, okay? So switch number one is worth one. Switch yeah. number two is worth two. Switch number three is worth four. Switch number four is worth eight. And so as you go up the line, they double each time, okay? So with that being said, currently we're set to number one because we only have switch number one in the on position. All the others are set to off, okay? So let's say that we wanted to set the address value to three. So in that case, we would need to turn on switch number one and number two because switch number two is worth two. Right. Switch number one is worth one. So you add those numbers together and it gives you your grand total of your, your address, right? So all we do is simply switch number two to on, 
and then we can press the enter key and you see that our address switch changed to number three. Yeah, there you go. And so it's that simple. So those are the two main, or three main things I should say that get changed are the instance number, the MAC address, and the baud rate. And every single water source heat pump connected to this BAS system needs to have its own switch number. Exactly. Right? Yes. Okay. That's correct. So our goal to go through is to connect and give each heat pump its own unique identity so it can communicate back to the BAS system. Exactly. And that's what I tell people all the time. A MAC address is kind of like a social security number for a water source heat yeah. pump or any, any backnet device yeah. over MSTP. And so if you have a, an IP card, a back note over IP, which connects via Ethernet cable, um, the process through PuTTY is the same, but you would be changing an IP address instead of a MAC address. Okay. And uh, I'm not familiar with PuTTY, but I guess it's a big PLC program. It is, yeah. A lot of folks are used to using yeah, it. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah, so it's, it's kind of a, an older program. You know, if you're talking to controls guys that have been in the field for a long time, they're, yeah. they're familiar with PuTTY. Okay. You know, uh, maybe some of the newer guys, not so much. Um, it's a serial connection uh, program. You know, and it allows you to do um, programming like this. Okay, well, cool. Well, thanks for sharing. I learned a lot. Um, so, hey, don't forget to go get those cables before you get out on site. Um, you're not going to be able to find them in the, uh, in the store. And uh, check this video out for how to address uh, these uh, back net cards for water source heat pumps. And then thank you so much for your support. Always hit that like, hit the subscribe, come back, and uh, check us out at Mechanical Pros. And we'll check you out next time.